Our first guest today is Ron Sunquist from Clovis. Are you Clovis? from Clovis your whole life? I met no, you in Clovis, no, in downtown no. Clovis. No, not my whole life. You're from I Minnesota from or something. Brainerd, Brainerd, Minnesota. Brainerd, Minnesota. Where is that? Uh, everybody else asks that. Yeah. <laughs> That's up in uh, central Minnesota. Geographically, mm -hmm. throw a dart to the center of the state. Mm -hmm. If you see the state of Minnesota, which is a strange shape, uh, throw a dart. It'll hit right in the center. That's brain. Is that the lake state or what is Minnesota? 10,000 lakes 10, plus lakes. more after every rainstorm. After every, now, who's the most famous person from Minnesota? Is it Hubert Humphrey or something like that? or Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan, okay. But was Hubert Humphrey from Minnesota? I Hubert Humphrey? Uh, yeah, there was a joke. Uh, someone made a uh, uh, slip up once uh, pronouncing his name, uh, Hubert Humphrey, or uh, uh, it, it was really a hard name for some yeah, Hubert politicians. Horatio Humphrey. Hubert, Hubert. Horatio yeah. Humphrey, and he was vice president to who? Oh, it was. Uh, it's a trivia question. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting on a tangent. Uh, where are you? Uh, where, where are you <laughs> with your question? I didn't well, who hear was it. Hubert Humphrey vice president to? He was vice president to uh, Walter Mondale. No, Walter Mondale was never president, but Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> no, I'm and uh, Lyndon Johnson I'm became kidding. president, and he didn't have a vice president because there's no, no uh, provision in the Constitution to appoint one. When he ran for re-election, he had Humphrey, uh, Humphrey, uh, you know, be his vice president. No. Then Humphrey ran for president against that guy uh, Richard Nixon, and we never heard from Humphrey again. Yeah, seriously, I'm very weak on politics. Yeah. Uh, history. That's good. That's my As, job here at Central Valley Talk. Uh, you're, okay, you're so Minnesota, is that where Fargo is? Fargo, yes. The movie. Yeah, made is Fargo, it in Minnesota? Police, yes. Fargo, North. No, Fargo, North, North, Dakota. North Dakota. But don't they talk, well, have that lake dialect there in Minnesota? Uh, too? Fargo, uh, they have a Fargo, Minnesota, too. Mm. Uh, yeah, the police chief was uh, mm. in that movie. That's not water. Wow, that's some good stuff there. Oh, you didn't give me any. Okay, so you're from Minnesota. And now you're in Clovis. What's uh, was that a quick transition? Uh, there's no connection really. Um, actually, my folks came out to manage a hotel in Reedley. In Reedley, wow. Myrtle Burgess, uh, who was a lawyer, uh, uh, family lawyer in Reedley, had the new hotel, Winnis Hotel, re in re innovated it in uh, the early, well, no, late 70s. It's in downtown Reedley? Uh, 11th and G Street, yep. still there, 15 mm -hmm. rooms, and uh, she wanted my, she's my mom's second cousin. Mm -hmm. you no, know, my second cousin, her first cousin. Uh, but anyway, uh, they were asked, to, my folks, to come out and manage the hotel. So, of course, I drove my mom out, my dad flew, and uh, we're here. Uh, we stayed about two years during the grand opening, running the hotel, and then I moved to Fresno and lived on uh, Franklin and Roosevelt, mm -hmm. which uh, rent was $65 a month. Can you believe that? What we need to do is uh, the TV station's calling yes. us right now, so we're going to take a break, find out what's going on. We're going to come back and we're going to finish grilling Ron Sunquist about how he got from Minnesota to the Valley. We'll be back right Sounds after good. this. We've been talking today with Ron Senquist. Welcome, Ron, from Minnesota. You guys relocated to Reedley. How old were you when that happened? Uh, <clears throat> I was in my early 20s. Okay. So you remember Minnesota? Did it ever snow there? Uh, many times. Really? <laughs> many times. Uh, we, we shoveled ourselves out of uh, wow. six-foot drifts at wow. times. Uh, and people from the valley don't quite understand that. No, just to get the car out of the garage. Yeah. Uh, we were snowbound uh, for three days at one time, so... So yeah, uh, yeah, living out in the country, um, ride the school bus. I missed a few days of school mm -hmm. because of the snow. snow. Then you went off to the Navy and ended up back here then? Some well, well, the Navy ships I was on uh, were in the air. I was oh. in the Air Force. Oh. So you weren't in the Navy? I wasn't in the Navy. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, Kind of pinning a bad well, badge well, on you there, huh? Maybe I'm all wet. All wet. So, so you weren't in the Navy, you were in the Air Force. Air Force. And did you get uh, some air time? Vietnam era, no. I, I flew, though, on a Connie, uh, which is an old uh, Constellation, three-fin three, three fin tail. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see them. I always uh, thought they looked like the uh, shape of a greyhound dog, you mm -hmm. know, running with a long nose. That's what the aircraft looked like. We flew in the block, Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, pre dawn above the clouds i saw my first sunrise above the clouds wow but the piston engines all oh, the, the old piston engines with the sparks just flying out of the ports on mm. that on the wing uh in the early hours during the darkness is an awesome sight I see. 
So then somehow you got out of the Air Force, and I bump into you in Clovis, California. Yes. And my uh, first recollection, you were involved with that museum in the downtown Clovis. The first time I really got to know you was um, we, we were talking about Nathan Megsig, and he, he was uh, working for you at the time. And now he's um, won the election for Fresno County Supervisor. Supervisor. Mayor Magzig is going to the county, the big, yeah. the big time. Huh? Hooray, hooray for Nathan. He, he well deserves it. Uh, but no, Mike, um, I, I've known you for quite a few years. And, then, and then I helped uh, go door to door. Mm -hmm. One year you were running uh, a campaign. And right next to the Tarpey Depot on Clovis mm -hmm. Avenue in Clovis, yeah. um, I worked with your mom and uh, your family, mm -hmm. and I got to know you even better. And, and it, it's just been a great relationship ever since. And somebody from our staff's been bugging you to come in here and talk about your photos. And we're going to look at some photos in a minute. And Or can we do that now? Uh, yes. Uh, some of these photos are very controversial because uh, many people don't believe uh, that things like these can ever happen or exist. They, uh, that's a biophoton uh, stream of um, uh, arcs that were photographed by a spectra Polaroid camera. Now, the police department in the 80s used Polaroid spectra cameras for uh, police investigations. They're very sensitive to certain light waves. And uh, for some reason, I was able to capture uh, life energy. Th mm -hmm. This is uh, what biophotons are all about. Here we have, I also do a little astronomy. These are four objects filmed uh, moving around uh, erratically in the corona of the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, this was back in 2010 through 2000. It's going to come uh, back to us 12. between each, uh, each set. And so, so these are what going around the sun now? Uh, well, uh, could be plasma. Who knows what is what you're could, saying, right? Uh, it, it's controversial because uh, no one knows. So uh, if you can't identify something, what do you call it? I just call it controversial. How about an unidentified <laughs> flying object, like a UFO? I mean, well, a UFO doesn't have to be uh, a spaceship from no. outer space. It's just something you can't identify. So well, again, is it a flying object? Yeah, go back to that one again with the things yes. around the... What are they around the sun? But again, they're in the, they're uh, near and uh, in and around the corona of the sun. Uh, the uh, uh, see the greenish area around the white. The the white is the globe of the sun, which is ninety three million miles away. You use some kind of filter away. or something for this. Um, or? You use a high density filter, okay. a sun filter for telescopes. And for some reason, uh, this was all shot on video. This is a still from the video, which I don't have any longer. So I've, you took this through a telescope. I've actually just. Uh, disposed of a lot of my footage that I captured. Uh, uh, this is uh, another object that was wrapped in the energy of the corona. You can just see it enveloped one, uh, the left side of that the bluish object. That's not a star, that's not a spacecraft. And for uh, as far away as it is, it's huge. Something it's, that burst out of the sun. No, if it burst out of the sun, it would have a totally different shape than that. This is a perfect uh, egg-shaped object. Mm -hmm. And um, now this is very interesting. Here are eight objects in negative light. I, I was showing this in, in reverse lighting because uh, it just shows the detail better. Uh, of course, the corona would be green. Otherwise, the sun would be white, and the objects would be uh, white. Like are those objects up above? I... Those are up above, okay. eight in formation. They came from above, went across and down below the sun just so fast, uh, faster actually than the speed of light. Hmm. So, uh, so uh, that was one frame that I took off the video. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, you, you really couldn't hardly see it on the video because it went by so fast, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all eight of them. And you didn't see it at the time, probably. You had to go back and look no, at the video I, and you said, hey, there's something there. I, I'm aiming the camera at the sun at this time, <clears throat> and I'm always observing any movement. My eyes are kind of the peripheral vision of the sun, so I see anything that moves into the area or around the sun. And I just saw a flash of something mm -hmm. come from top to bottom. And then when I showed uh, this footage in slow motion, ultra slow motion, uh, then I really, really was amazed. Really saw. I was really yeah. amazed. Yeah. What else? We have some nature kind of thing. Is that? Yeah. What that here's is? a here's a That's nice. That's not an unidentified object, right? No. This is like a little fruit fly, piggybacking oh on a goodness. snail. It's uh, it, it's quite a. And you once, took that picture. I took that. That is absolutely fascinating. It, it's once in a lifetime that you would capture a fly piggybacking on a 
shell of a snail. I and, and the lighting was perfect because you can see how the lighting was in front of me. So uh, you can see the shadow of the fly on the shell really well. Now the the snail, you've seen our tortoise outside. Oh, he he would love snails. I yeah, suppose. and we saw a snail on the back of the tortoise one day, and we oh. mic'd it just to see if there's any sound coming out of the snail, and he was going wee. This is the fastest I've ever gone. Gone. He was on the back of the tortoise, so it's an old joke. I didn't make that up, really. So you do some nature photography. I do. This is a dragonfly that was filmed at Creek Park Village in Clovis, mm -hmm. Senior Living Center. But now I've seen these orange ones before. Why? Well, this uh, this was really uh, bright for some reason. I have never seen the orange ones before myself. And would the wings be moving and your photos stop them or were, 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 were the wings still? No, no, actually it was stationary at the time. Uh, but look at that smile. He's that smiling, smile huh? on that guy. I tell you, just uh, one of my favorite shots. I, yeah. I gave a copy to uh, one of our guests the other day that was on mm -hmm. your show here. Uh, she was wearing a pendant of a dragonfly mm -hmm. and she liked dragonflies. So mm -hmm. I showed her the photo, gave it to her, and she was happy. Now, what is this scary beast coming this up? This is Something a you saw in the this woods is a squirrel. Of or? A scary beast. <laughs> it's a squirrel. I can't really see. I thought it was a koala bear or something. <laughs> koala bear. I I thought the uh, he looks way, like he's looking you in the eye. I mean, he, just really looking at you, just like you. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, seriously. Um, I, I really wait for these moments, mm -hmm. and this was in the autumn of the year, the leaves are starting to change color, and the color with the squirrel, the oranges and the browns and the greens. Mm -hmm. and of course, the sky was blue, but uh, having, uh, you know, uh, using Photoshop to uh, mm -hmm. uh, lighten up the squirrel, because he was in the shadows, yeah. Yeah, it, it washes dark. out the blue of the background. Mm -hmm. that, it, and these shots, you have to wait a long time to get them sometimes. Oh, sometimes you never get them. People think you just run out and snap a picture and you got right. this great picture, but it and, takes hours and hours. And I've gotten pretty good at sports. Mm -hmm. I don't have the best sports lens, but uh, this is one of a Clovis shot putter at the CIF track meet this last weekend. Clovis High School? Buchanan High School. Buchanan High School. It okay. was a statewide meet, and uh, this young man was... Uh, he captured him in action and stopped uh, him there. Go not, back one more time, easy. let's look a at that. Actually, uh, when you see how he's leaning to the one side, he was actually twirling around. Mm. I used one uh, 1600th shutter speed. So mm -hmm. one thousand six hundredth of a second to stop to, to stop uh, the motion. But uh, this was at night, so lighting was very critical. Yeah. So I had to lighten it up a little on the mm. computer because you use Photoshop. Uh, o only to lighten it up a little. Uh -huh. I, I I don't use any modifications you know, of anything up otherwise. Or... Uh, lighten or add contrast to. Uh, that's it. But as far as everything else it's mm -hmm. it's the way it happened now, are your photos out anywhere on a website or anything where we could see them no actually I've been asked to uh, put some of these out uh, in different stores so uh, maybe in the near future mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not promising yet I have to go through uh, well I've got 6,000 photos on mm -hmm. my Facebook page alone but that's just a few of the files I have mm -hmm. in the computer so uh, I usually post the best ones I like mm -hmm. on Facebook and yet uh, many of... Uh, and what's your Facebook? How would they find you? Just look for Ron um, Sunquist. There's probably uh, not a just, million of those, huh? Yeah, well, there are five Ron Sunquists on mm. Facebook. I'm the only one wearing this Western hat. Cowboy hat. As you yeah. can see, yeah. Now, did that come out from Minnesota with you? Is that what happened? No. No, actually, this is a um, idea that I came up with in when I moved to Clovis. Mm -hmm. The Clovis way of life was rather Western yep. at the time. And, and I was the first director of our museum, so... Um, with uh, some of the old ranchers that would come in and uh, hash uh, over their stories with me. Uh, they, they dressed Western and I just kind of took it on. I have an armadillo belt buckle so and yeah. uh, I don't wear boots all that often except maybe at uh, more of, of the better functions, mm -hmm. but uh, they're... Now you've taken a new position someplace we are hearing. Yes, it, it's somewhere in Fresno I hear mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm going to be like Barnes well, part of it will be like a butler. I've always wanted to be a butler. Did you ever watch, um, what was it, um, Family Affair mm -hmm. and uh, the butler? He Mr. Lived, French. Mr. French, yeah. yes. He lived a good life. Uh, well, I've always admired butlers and uh, greeters. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went to the um, uh, Roosevelt Hotel on, uh, in, in New Orleans mm -hmm. and stayed there a couple nights and uh, 
the bellboys or the doormen were dressed with plumes <laughs> in their hats and just elegant, elegant. Door, doormen, greeters, you know, are, are fantastic. They, they kind of get you lightened up as you come to these mm -hmm. uh, beautiful places. So, um, so uh, that's something that I'm going to do uh, in the near future, believe it or not, for one of the best studios and the best company in the world, which is Central Valley Talk. Wow, oh, so you're going to be doing it right here. You're going to be greeting the guests and saying hi to people and stuff. I, I, now, will you be wearing I'm these proud. plumes like in New Orleans? Uh, I doubt it. You doubt I doubt it. it. No, no. only if we have a New Orleans theme or okay. maybe if it's the Mardi Gras Mardi here, Gras here in uh, the Tower District. I've and, been to the Rose Hotel, Hotel in New Orleans. So. Yes, this was very old. They had the white and black tile. You know, It is real nice inside. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this is uh, something that I will be doing a change uh, in residency in August, and I thought, well, what better place to be of service mm -hmm. to not only Clovis, which I will stay in touch with my veterans, which I go every Monday morning and uh, operate the camera. I'm uh, active in my church, Clovis Hills Community Church at the time, but I've had uh, invites to other churches through the studio here, and I may respond to some of those churches to see what they're all about. Now, you're going to be booking guests and people who want to appear on the shows. They can talk to you and you'll help them get on the show. Booking guests is one of my priorities. Um, this is such a uh, fantastic venue to promote your business, promote your talents, promote your uh, literacy if you're an author. Oh, it, it's just, and, and the hosts are unbelievable. They're, uh, as you can see today with Mike Briggs. The nicest host, the, no uh, doubt. Host with the most, so to speak. I have to say you, you're, you're one of the best. Uh, but I've had some uh, uh, other hostesses, like Lauren, mm -hmm. and um, uh, of course, uh, a while back, Mike Scott mm -hmm. uh, was hosting and a uh, very fascinating person. So I see he's retiring from CBS also. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so anyway. Um, you are doing a fantastic job here, and Thanks. my photography is just one facet of what I delve into. I'm, I'm into, like we say, paranormal, or we saw, mm -hmm. you know, paranormal to a, to a point. Um, I've actually was uh, the first one to stay overnight in the uh, Wolf Manor. Oh, yeah. They Wolf tore Manor. it down. We, uh, we actually guess. talked about that on the last show I was on, so I'm not going to go into that, but I have a complete story that I can tell about that. Mm -hmm. And it actually was spooky. Was haunted, yeah. So. Well, I don't know about haunt. Yeah, haunted because I, I, I've heard things there, but I didn't see too much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's there's uh, some unanswered questions involved when it was here. Anyway, so Ron Sanquist is our guest. Uh, before we're out of time, do you have anything to add? I always cut people short and don't let them t tell their story. They, come up to me after the mic, you know, I came on to talk about this, but we never got to it. So do we cover everything for now? Because we're going to have you back, too. Well, I'm also a movie buff, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they made a remake to, uh, or a sequel to Gone with the Wind. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you, you're up on that. I have not seen that. You haven't seen that. It was uh, I saw the original low budget. Uh, it was low budget. Low budget. Yeah, called Shooting the Breeze. <laughs> Shooting the Breeze. <laughs> And he tells jokes, too. So um, our guest is Ron Sundquist. Uh, people, some call him Mr. Clovis, because anytime you go to downtown Clovis, you bump into Ron Sundquist sooner or later. He takes pictures of people. I met him at the museum. I think I donated some of my stuff to the museum there in Clovis, and you can still see it there. And he's gonna, Ron's going to help us build some archives here of some of our memories. So you'll see Ron here at Center Valley Talk. If you want to come on a show, get a hold of Ron Sundquist. Just go to Facebook, type in Ron Sundquist. There's five of them, but only one of them has a cowboy hat, right? Look, look for this. And we'll be back with more Mike and Athena right after this.